Here is a, a, what um, Matthew Bunsen, who's the general editor of the Catholic Almanac, and this was from the New York Times, he said this, and he was correlating the, po the, the cardinals who are active in social media to those who also seem to be the front runners, which I thought was kind of interesting. He said this, when you finger down the list of tweeting cardinals, many of them are, that are considered papable, uh, Cardinal Angelo Scola of Italy tweets aggressively. Odilo Scherer of Brazil has Twitter. And, of course, Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York is very popular online. Do you think, Father Beck, who, by the way, we tweet back and forth, uh, do you think that, in fact, there's some correlation between aggressive on social media and being sort of high up on the list of, of possible popes? I'm not really sure, Soledad, how much impact that has, because if you read most of the tweets, they're rather innocuous. I do think that those who are tweeting, though, are very interesting candidates. Yesterday, I was at that mass with Cardinal Dolan, and he was indeed like a rock star in that church. It was obvious to me that Italians in that church, even though it is his titular church here in Rome, had never seen him before. They were amazed at the personality that exuded from Cardinal Dolan. When I was outside, I was standing next to an Italian gentleman. And he said something to me in Italian that I didn't quite get. It sounded very idiomatic. And so I said to the person next to me, can you translate what he just said? And the man said, iron fist in a velvet glove. <laughs> and perhaps for many, perhaps for many, that is the quintessential definition of Cardinal Dolan. He is a staunch conservative. He is orthodox. And yet he does it with a smile, with compassion, with an accessibility that many are looking for in a pope today. He's the Archbishop of New York, of course, so I've had an opportunity to hear him a lot. But I think there are a lot of people who would say there is no way an American is going to be picked as pope. So do you think, we heard Miguel say 2 p.m. tomorrow was the first possible time that a vote would be taken. Do you think it'll actually be that straightforward? One, you know, by two o'clock we'll see the black, white, gray smoke. <laughs> well, it always starts gray. It takes a while to figure it out. Last time, I in, two, in 2005, they had to. There was even confusion when they rang the bell because the bells ring pretty regularly. We were all so, live on TV <laughs> and trying to figure out what's going on. Is the bell ringing, or is it just ringing for 12 noon? Uh, I really don't see it happening in one vote. In the first ballot, uh, and in, in the early ballots, they can have as many candidates as they want. So there could be 20 different people getting votes, and it means that no one's ever going to get to a two-thirds majority. Mm -hmm. Cardinal Francis George of Chicago said last week that it's the first ballot that will really show the mind to, 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 the, to, the, group, to the College of Cardinals, the first time that they'll really see the collective mind of the body oh, as see. they see who gets so votes. The, the narrowing down. It's, so it'll take several days, Father, I think. Uh,